Hello. This is Tom Kimmel. My uh, 2017 petition to the Board for Correction of Naval Records, BCNR, seeking administrative action to remove error and injustice from the naval record of my grandfather, Rear Admiral Husband Kimmel, was denied earlier this year. The Board recommended not to grant the relief requested. Advancement of Kimmel to his highest held wartime rank. So, this might be a good time to compare the 2018 Board for Correction of Naval Records report against Kimmel with the 1942 Roberts report against Kimmel and General Short, the head of the Army Hawaiian Command, and the 1991 Army Board for Correction of Military Records report in favor of Short. That's in favor of Short. The injustice to Admiral Kimmel began immediately after the attack by the Roberts Commission. Chairman Roberts' errors cannot be overstated. His conclusion that Kimmel and Short were solely responsible for the success of the Pearl Harbor attack and derelict in their duty, and that their far more culpable superiors fulfilled their obligations, is explicable only as a mission with a predetermined outcome. Moreover, had Justice Roberts properly and ethically discharged his duties as the investigator, there would have been no need to suppress exculpable evidence, no need to take unsworn testimony, no need to distort the truth, no need to deprive the public of essential knowledge, no need to jettison the honor of Admiral Kimmel in the name of military necessity, no need to perpetuate a lie, and no need to petition the BCNR for administrative action to remove injustice in the Admiral Kimmel matter. Kimmel's predecessor, Kimmel's predecessor's comments are on point. Admiral J. L. Richardson wrote, I cannot conceive of any honorable man being able to recall his service as a member of the Roberts Commission without great regret and the deepest feeling of shame. The report of the Roberts Commission was the most unfair, unjust, and deceptively dishonest document ever printed by the government printing office. Here's a partial list, a partial list of what BCNR knew in 2018 that the Roberts Commission did not know in 1942. Number one, members of the Washington High Command, that would be Marshall, Stark, Garreau, Turner, Miles, and Wilkinson, provided false testimony and false evidence, irreparably prejudicial to Kimmel. Two, members of the Washington High Command withheld exculpatory evidence from Kimmel, denying him the means to defend himself. Three, members of the Washington High Command told the Roberts Commission that Kimmel had the same information in Hawaii as they had in Washington, D.C., a blatant untruth. Four, immediately after the Roberts Commission, members of the Washington High Command manipulated Kimmel into retirement against his will and schemed to preclude any further investigation of Pearl Harbor. Five, the Washington High Command discussed magic, the secret decoding of any Japanese coded material, freely with the Roberts Commission in 1941, when an impression could be left that Kimmel had magic. But in 1944, when that was no longer possible, the Washington High Command declared that magic could not be discussed with the Naval Court of Inquiry or the Army Pearl Harbor Board. Six, Chairman Roberts lied to the Joint Congressional Committee in 1946. 
Seven, the chief of staff of the Army General Marshal perjured himself before the Army Pearl Harbor Board and ordered subordinates to do so as well. Eight, the chief of naval operations, Admiral Stark, perjured himself before the Naval Court of Inquiry and destroyed evidence. Nine, the Naval Court of Inquiry vindicated Kimmel in 1944, but the Navy Department refused to reveal this fact for over a year, thus denying Kimmel the public justice that the Navy's own system accorded him. Thirty-two years ago, the Board for Correction of Naval Records erroneously refused to hear the Kimmel matter, thus denying an early opportunity to remove injustice for Kimmel. And 11, 28 years ago, the Army Board for Correction of Military Re Records recommended removal of injustice for General Short. Knowing all of the proceeding, how can BCNR's report be anything but more unjust, more unfair, more shameful than that of the Roberts report? Anyone who cannot find injustice in the Admiral Kimmel matter does not want to find injustice in the Admiral Kimmel matter. Chairman Roberts was a United States Supreme Court Associate Justice and a former prosecutor, so it's reasonable to assume he was not incompetent. That leaves predetermined outcome as a possibility. Because the members of my Board for Correction of Naval Records are still unknown to me, I can make no judgment as to their competence. So I'll look at predetermined outcome as a possibility. <clears throat> Here are the purposes of the Roberts Commission, as detailed by President Roosevelt himself in his executive order on December 18, 1941. Whether any derelictions of duty or errors of judgment on the part of Army or Navy personnel contributed to the enemy's success, and if so, what those derelictions or errors were and who were responsible therefor. In other words, find someone to blame. Here is the Navy Boards, the Board for Correction of Naval Records report concerning my petition. Here it is in its entirety, save for the attachment, which you'll see shortly. There are several significant things to notice in BCNR's report and its attached Office of Legal Counsel's advisory opinion. First, the apparent extent to which the board relied on the advisory opinion. Three times in this very short report, we read, the board considered the advisory opinion. And then again, the board substantially concurred with the comments in the advisory opinion. And finally, the board still concurred with the advisory opinion. Second point of keen interest, substantially more than 50% of both the board's report and the advisory opinion are dedicated to arguing that the Navy acted legally. This is irrelevant and a red herring as nowhere does my petition to BCNR suggest that it acted otherwise, only that it acted unjustly. Third, here's the Office of Legal Counsel's advisory opinion in its entirety. Interestingly, the words error or injustice or any equivalent words do not appear anywhere in the advisory opinion.
Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the advisory opinion in BCNR's report dedicated to their argument that the Navy acted legally. Fourth, BCNR does not dispute my facts, just my conclusion, their argument. The Secretary of the Navy, or somebody, we don't know whom, acted legally. I never suggested this someone, whomever it was, did not. Only that that action was unjust. My argument. The advancement issue has nothing to do with performance evaluation and everything to do with bureaucratic skullduggery. Admiral Kimmel was the only Navy flag officer not advanced to his highest held wartime rank. Short, the only Army flag officer. Certainly, to an honorable man, a form of punishment. In 1948, someone, presumably in the Navy Department, we don't know whom, merely omitted the name of Admiral Kimmel, we don't know why, from the list of flag officers whose promotion was authorized. That would be everyone else, without any reference to his or anyone's performance, constituting a belated, special, disciplinary action of a punitive kind taken without notice to the officers specifically singled out by such omission, Kimmel. Surely the simplest mind can see this. Indeed, the Army Board for Correction of Military Records saw it, finding injustice to General Short, though the Secretary of the Army acted legally. Anyone who cannot find injustice in the Kimmel matter does not want to find injustice in the Kimmel matter or is on a mission with a predetermined outcome. The Navy Board's recommendation is absurdly inconsistent with that of the Army Board for General Short. In 1991, the Army Board recommended that the relief requested for General Short be granted, though the Secretary of the Army acted legally. In 2018, the Navy Board recommended that the relief requested for Kimmel not be granted because the Secretary of the Navy acted legally. The relief requested for Short and Kimmel was and still is identical. These boards are in irreconcilable conflict. The, Navy's bo the Navy Board's report is perfunctory. The Army Board's report is detailed. Navy Board members are not known to me. Army Board members are, though the Navy has helpfully advised me that I can find out who was on my board through the Freedom of Information Act. Apparently, as this graphic suggests, no performance review of anyone was conducted by the Army or the Navy when compiling authorization lists, which, incidentally, have never been produced. Consider the case of Major General Henry Miller for just one example of an officer who was retired at his highest held wartime rank. Seven weeks before D-Day, General Miller, a member of General Spatz's Army Air Corps staff, got drunk at a nightclub in London, Claridge's, and had proceeded to take bets that the D-Day invasion would occur before June 15th. When General Spatz found out, he placed Miller under house arrest. When Eisenhower found out about it, he demoted Miller to colonel and returned him to the States. And yet he was allowed to retire at his highest held wartime rank. <clears throat> the only 
Navy Board error I asserted in my petition was that BCNR erroneously and inappropriately refused to hear my father and uncle's BCNR petition in 1987. BCNR effectively admitted this error by hearing the matter in 2017, but they dismissed it as a procedural error, not material error, which is, of course, true. It's also misleading because had the Army Board heard the matter in 1987, as they effectively admit, admitted they should have, they would have had to deal with my father, a career naval officer, my uncle, a Harvard lawyer, and Admiral Kimmel's counsel, another Harvard lawyer, who convinced the Naval Court of Inquiry to vindicate Admiral Kimmel by erroneously delaying the matter for 30 years BCNR ensured they would only have to deal with me. The board handled my repeated requests for a personal appearance thus. Regarding your request for a personal appearance, the board determined that a personal appearance with or without counsel will not materially add to their understanding of the issues involved. Therefore, the board determined that a personal appearance was not necessary. BCNR not only refused to allow me my requested personal appearance, they also refused a requested personal appearance from Army, from Admiral James Ace Lyons former commander of the Pacific Fleet and a former deputy chief of naval operations. Tellingly, they did not seek the advice of the director of naval history, nor did they mention in their report dozens of advocacy letters and quotations submitted in support of the relief requested. Had I been granted a personal appearance, I would have emphasized the fact that the Washington High Command told the Roberts Commission that Kimmel and Short had the same information in Hawaii as they had in Washington, D.C. This information did Kimmel and Short irreparable prejudice. The Washington High Command, as officers and decent human beings, knowing full well what they had done, had an obligation to immediately rectify the prejudice to Kimmel and Short from such deplorable misinformation. They did not do so. That alone should be enough to establish injustice and compel, compel the relief sought. BCNR and the advisory opinion are silent on that point, and several others that I would have mentioned given the chance. Indeed, BCNR, BCNR does not even mention the Naval Court of Inquiry's vindication of Kimmel. How is that possible? In February of this year, I received the following email from the Deputy Director of the Board for Correction of Naval Records, Bradley Good. Mr. Kimmel, I've attached a copy of the final decision regarding the petition you filed on your grandfather in 2017. I understand that this may not be the decision you had been hoping for, but I hope this provides some closure for you and your family. I wish the Kimmel family well. Closure. Bradley, did you say closure? Ladies and gentlemen, John Bluto Blutarski, my role model for public speaking, especially about closure. Over? Did you say over? Nothing is over until we decide it is. Was it over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? Hell no! Germans, the Kennedy's rolling. And it ain't over now. Because when the going gets tough, a tough get going! Who's with me? Let's go! Go on! Ah! 
Earlier this year, in March, I received this marvelous endorsement for the advancement of Admiral Kimmel and General Short from the Sons and Daughters of Pearl Harbor Survivors Incorporated. So much for closure. Thank you.